Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Answers from the Lab, where we share Mayo Clinic knowledge and advancements on the state of testing and science from laboratory leaders and the people who are making it happen behind the scenes. I'm Dr. Bobby Pritt, Interim Chair of the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. We have two special guests with us today, Dr. Stefan Grebe, the co-director of the Clinical Mass Spectrometry and Test Development Laboratory in the Department of Laboratory Medicine and Pathology. He has a specialty in endocrinology and tumor markers. And Dr. Arena Bankash, Associate Professor in the Division of Endocrinology with a joint appointment in Biochemistry and Immunology. And she has interest in the diagnosis and management of adrenal disorders. So with all of this great background today, we are going to talk about adrenal gland tumors. Stefan and Arena, thank you both for being with us today. Thank you. Thank no, you. We are very pleased to be here. And uh, I think this should be quite an interesting little session for those who are, uh, want to know more about the adrenal glands and their tumors. Uh, yeah, I agree. And, uh, and why don't we even start? We'll just start with you, Dr. Grebe. Um, probably with a quick reminder for our audience of what the adrenal gland does in its normal state, since many of us probably haven't given much thought to this important organ recently. Yeah, it's kind of a small organ. Uh, if you do remember your anatomy, uh, the adrenal glands are just uh, above the kidneys, and uh, that's why they are also called suprarenal glands uh, in the old uh, literature, of course. But they have nothing to do with urine or urine flow or what the kidney does. Uh, they uh, do con uh, they, they do consist of two different parts. One is a giant uh, a, a, a giant nerve uh, complex, which is in the middle of the base. Uh, it's basically a, a giant ganglion, which uh, is the, uh, which is the medulla of the. Uh, adrenal gland. And uh, these are uh, endocrine cells uh, which uh, belong to the neuroendocrine system. Then around those is a rim of uh, cells which are of completely different origin. And uh, those are cells uh, which, are in, which are involved in uh, steroid synthesis and steroid metabolism. So the two are separate from each other, and they don't actually overlap in, in their function. Yeah, I always thought that was so fascinating. Would you say that there are even two different organs, or would you still consider it one organ with two very different functions? I mean, Irina might have a different opinion, but I would think that uh, they're just uh, uh, two things uh, in the same packaging, but uh, they have completely different functions for the most part. Interesting. Now, unfortunately, cells can go wrong and we can get abnormal growths in any part of our body. And that's not uh, uh, any different for adrenal glands. Um, and so you can get tumors forming, benign or malignant. So Dr. Bankhaus, uh, how common are adrenal tumors? Actually, quite common, 5%. Hmm of CT scans, abdominal CT scans would reveal a tumor. Sometimes actually ignored in the cardiology report, but they are there. So 5% wow. of adults getting CT scans but have an adrenal mass. Wow, that's quite interesting. So if you um, discover a potential tumor growth um, as a clinician, um, or if this is noted on any type of exam, what would be the usual diagnostic approach in a patient who might have one of these adrenal growths? Well, as with any tumor, the first question we need to answer, is it a cancerous adrenal mass or is it a benign adrenal mass? But there's one other very important question that needs answering for adrenal tumor specifically, and that is, is it function? Is it producing any hormones or not? And as far as the first question, is it cancer, is it benign? We know that 8% of all patients with adrenal tumors would have a cancerous tumor, and 92% would have a benign mass. As far as function, it really very much depends, and that's the second question, very much depends whether we're looking for overt function or significant hormonal production or just mild hormonal production. Around 60% of, of all adrenal tumors are non-functioning, 
and 40% produce at least some hormones, so uh, considered functional. Interesting. Well, let's drill down a bit further then into these different types of tumors. Dr. Grebe, what are the common types of tumors that occur in the adrenal gland? Basically, uh, those which uh, affect uh, the adrenal medulla, uh, mm -hmm. which are pheochromocytomas, or uh, the uh, uh, or the adrenal layer, uh, which is uh, surrounds the pheo uh, pheochrom uh, the pheo uh, level, and uh, these. Uh, and these have, as we discussed before, uh, different functions and uh, different locations. And we uh, have uh, normally in physiology different uh, uh, different things they regulate. Interesting. So we have different types of tumors in the adrenal gland. Obviously, laboratory medicine is an important part of diagnosing these. Um, what are, uh, Dr. Bankosh, uh, what are the different types of laboratory tests then, now that we've talked about the different types of tumors and how they may present, um, that we would use for actually diagnosing the types of these tumors? Yeah, sure. So the standard of care tests include workup for cortisol excess, aldosterone excess, androgen excess, and catecholamine or adrenaline excess. Mm. So when we look for cortisol excess, we do dexamethasone suppression test. When we look for aldosterone excess, we do aldosterone and renin plasma activity. When we look for androgens, usually we would measure DHA sulfate. And when we look for that catecholamine excess, that uh, theochromocytoma type of workup, we are measuring plasma or urine metanephrines. And I guess do that since you have these two different tissue types in the same packaging, as Dr. Grebe said. So if you see mass, do you always uh, order all of these tests or is it selective perhaps for where the tumor is located? Oh, so, so based on the imaging, it's impossible to say whether it's coming from medulla or coming from the adrenal cortex. However, there is an important variable parameter on imaging that can help us at least exclude certain type of tumors and that's called density of the tumor. We, uh -huh. we measure Huntsville units, that's a measure of density on non-contrast CT scan, which most people with adrenal tumors have because that's how we actually discover the adrenal mass. If that density is low and what is considered low is under 10 Huntsville units, we can actually completely exclude pheochromocytomas or malignant adrenal masses. So if that's the case, which is the case in 70% of patients, we don't have to do work up for catecholamine excess or for pheochromocytoma, and we are not concerned that the mass is malignant. But we are still concerned that that adrenal mass may produce cortisol, aldosterone, or very rarely male hormone or androgens. Interesting. Yeah, it's really quite a complex little organ, isn't it? And then you have the question of, is it a benign tumor or a malignancy? So your lab, both of you actually are doing fascinating work using machine learning and um, other tools to distinguish adrenal carcinoma from common benign adrenal tumors, as well as non-endocrine adrenal malignancies. Can you both tell us a little bit about this work you're doing? Well, uh, the... Uh... You uh, touched it. The uh, other tumors, which of course uh, can happen besides the pheochromocytoma or the adrenal uh, cortex uh, type tumors, because you can get metastasis from otherwise, uh, other, uh, you can have uh, maybe a sarcoma or a lipoma. They may be benign or malignant. And uh, collectively, they probably take up what uh, a good quarter uh, of the uh, of the tumors we see so, uh, and there will be a large diversity of these tumors and uh, one of the things which we were interested uh, early on based on uh, uh, the work Dr. Benkos has done was to see whether we not just can say that a tumor is uh, an adrenal tumor is uh, a malignant or benign tumor, but also uh, perhaps to at least to a degree ferret out uh, whether 
one of these tumors may be something which has nothing to do as such with the adrenal gland, uh, but it has either migrated to the adrenal gland uh, or uh, it is a tumor which is uh, for, in structures uh, which are common, like uh, co uh, connective tissue or uh, fatty tissue. And fatty tissue, of course, is very common in the adrenal and the adrenal cortex uh, because uh, these in the adrenal cortex, all the cells basically uh, are in. You know, producing steroids, and steroids are, of course, lipids. And uh, you, you can imagine that uh, you could get, for example, a lipoma there, benign or malignant. Interesting. Dr. Van Kosh, anything to add? Uh, so, so, so I think the work is ongoing, but to sort of separate it in three different parts, First, what we've done, we've used all the rich Mayo Clinic data on thousands of patients with adrenal tumors, and we've used clinical variables, demographic variables, and imaging variables that I've already uh, mentioned, some of them, the health school units. And we um, created a machine learning tool that actually can um, separate patients into benign and malignant tumors based on, on that clinical data. The second thing we've done, we've um, developed a steroid profiling uh, test. Um, obviously, the, most of this work was done by laboratory medicine, but it's a pretty cool 24-hour uh, urine-based test, which measures 25 different steroids coming from the adrenal cortex. And it works on the premise that in adrenal cortical cancer, we would see immature steroid production that would be captured by the steroid profiling tool and would further improve the machine learning tool that was based on real clinical data to distinguish between uh, adrenal cortical cancer and other types of malignant tumors. And finally, the third part of that, which is uh, it's still ongoing and we are still collecting data, is to try to diagnose more accurately malignant tumors that are not adrenal cortical cancer. Yeah. And we're sort of trying to develop new biomarkers, trying to make a non-invasive diagnosis of these tumors. Why? Why not just biopsy? Because biopsy is actually, can actually be dangerous or inaccurate. So we are trying not to biopsy adrenal tumors and try to get the answer before we do surgery. Uh, because the surgical approach is different and may not be even needed. And we should say, may perhaps, that when we first uh, actually talked to anatomic pathology people uh, about this, they were quite excited because often when they look at uh, the adrenal cortical tumor, they're not sure whether this is malignant or benign based on the morphology or the, uh, the staining they can do. Of course, there's some clear cut ones, but uh, there's probably a third of uh, these tumors are in the gray zone where the anatomic pathologists uh, get uh, sometimes sleepless nights. Absolutely. Yeah, that's very interesting. And clearly, the, because it's not clear cut, you need this multimodal approach. Well, I'll just ask the two of you then, um, do you use machine learning now with any of the tests you offer, or do you see this as something that will be available in the near future? So the first and the second part is already available as um, a test that is already completely live. It's called ACC panel. But the third part would need much more work from myself, Dr. Grabby, and laboratory medicine department. Well, this is really exciting. Well, we will have to keep an eye on your work and perhaps have you back in the future to talk about part three. Well, thank you for sharing all of your expertise and updating our audience on adrenal tumors. Thank you for having us. Likewise, uh, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much for tuning in to Answers from the Lab. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to tune in every Thursday and every other Tuesday. <laughs>